Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Bach's most embarrassing work. What you say? Bach. Johann Sebastian Bach? He could do something that was embarrassing? Oh, hell yes. No question about it. Some of you, when we started this series, said, Ooh, now how are you going to do Bach? What are you going to do for Bach? As if it's a challenge. It's easy. Oh, it's so obvious. My goodness. How could anybody not peg this one? Are you ready, folks? Yes, because Bach was just a mortal like the rest of us, and he had his days. It's the concerto for four harpsichords, the stupidest piece of music composed in the entire Baroque era. Just as Bach's successes are transcendentally exalted, so his failures must plumb the uttermost depths of silliness musically. What could be sillier than a concerto for four harpsichords? Everything about this piece is wrong. Demonstrably, stupidly, ridiculously wrong. First of all, it's not even Bach's music. What he did was he filched the 10th concerto from Vivaldi's Lestro Armonico, Opus 3. It's concerto number 10 for four violins, four solo violins. And he arranged it for four clangorous, noisy, insane, bangy harpsichords. I mean, it's mind-boggling that he would do such a thing. Of course, he might have done it for his own use at home. He had like five harpsichords in his house, and he had his kids and the whole family playing, him and his wife and his sons and whatnot. Who knows? They could have just done it for to have like a good time on a Sunday instead of watching the ball game. And just imagine what it sounded like in a small room with like five harpsichords in it. If he had another one to play the continuo part, why not? What the hell? If you've got four, you might as well use five. Somehow it's hard to imagine him taking four harpsichords and schlepping them all to Zimmerman's Coffee House, um, where he ran the Collegium Musicum and gave concerts. I mean, I don't even know how big Zimmerman's Coffee House was. It must have been pretty substantial, but can you imagine stuffing four harpsichords into it while people had coffee? Ah, my God. Look, here's the bottom line. Most of Bach's keyboard concertos are transcriptions of music for originally melody instruments, usually a violin, an oboe, an oboe d'amour, some combination of things like that. So when you're taking music written for a melody instrument, which is a single line of melody, don't forget, and you're turning it into something for 10 fingers and two hands, yes, you have to give those 10 fingers and two hands something to do. That means writing more notes. That means more elaborate melodic lines, normally. And if the left hand plays the continuo, well, it's just clonking along usually, and maybe occasionally gets something of contrapuntal interest. But when you have four of these suckers with four melody instruments, and you're elaborating on them, every single note that Bach adds, and he added a lot of them, is only going to clog up the texture even worse. I mean, if you believe in Thomas Beecham's line that, that you know, a harpsichord, the sound of the harpsichord is two skeletons copulating on a tin roof. Imagine four harpsichords. You have an ossified orgy of, of, of banging and, 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 and mechanical noises. They click and, 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 oh my God. I mean, there's no satisfying recording of these pieces, none. I mean, they all sound noisy and horrible. And, and of course, having four harpsichords and a string ensemble, a tiny little string ensemble, completely reverses the balances between solo and orchestra that Vivaldi actually intended. I mean, Vivaldi's piece is delightful and charming and gently pathetic and lovely. And, and Bach germanifies the whole thing. It's like having four tanks rumbling through your concert room. I mean, it's just heavy and thick and clogged. And, and, and oh my goodness, it's, it's, it's an aesthetic abomination. It's embarrassing. It really is. It, and, you know, Bach's keyboard adaptations have varying ranges of, of interest in the keyboard part. Some things he adapted more successfully than others. It was not perfect. Not everything the man touched was perfect. 
Sometimes we restore the original versions because they sound better in their original versions, divorced from the, the noisome clangor of multiple harpsichords. Actually, one of the double harpsichord concertos, I think, is all original music. He actually intended it to be that way, which is a different question altogether. You know, but, but this thing, you know, taking someone else's piece, you know, Bach's contemporary and Handel's friend, Matheson, you know, Matheson said, it's perfectly fine to borrow as long as when you borrow, you repay the borrowing with interest. In other words, you, you do something new and wonderful to that which you have borrowed. You know, it's similar to taking a theme and doing variations on it, like Rachmaninoff's Rhapsody on a theme of Paganini. You take this theme and you, you do something terrific. You, you justify the borrowing. Does Bach justify stealing Vivaldi's entire concerto and pulverizing it under the under the the, the weight of four noisy sc screaming banging harpsichords of course not it's his most embarrassing work and people who try and delude themselves into thinking that because it's by Bach it has to be a masterpiece they're just out of their minds plain and simple so keep on listening friends thanks for joining me take care